Welcome to Grad School 101. Good morning, everybody. Um, as a general introduction, I have a presentation that I'll be sharing with you guys. I am the Senior Fellowships Office in Rackham's Finance and Fellowships team. So I have been here for about, I think, ooh, it's been four years almost. So um, I have a, a great knowledge of some of the fellowships and things. Um, and you may hear the term fellowship more so when it comes to graduate programs. So we'll be talking about some of those funding sources as I know that it can be a little bit different for students um, when it comes to undergraduate versus graduate funding. So let me turn this on for you guys so that you can kind of see this presentation. All right. All right, I think everyone should be good to be able to see that. Um, if not, just let us know in the chat. Um, so as you go through graduate school, there are, everyone wants to know how do they fund it? That's always the biggest question, of course. Um, so the expenses that typically need to be covered, of course, your tuition and your fees, books, living expenses, uh, which can be your room, your board, um, moving costs, childcare expenses, if you are, do have a family, um, and then also other family obligations. So those are all things that you want to make sure that you're considering as you're going about and planning your funding um, for the year. So most people think about how am I going to actually pay for this? Um, so there are different type of funding. You have um, external funding sources, and we'll talk more about those later. Um, and then there's also the financial need, which you apply for, through for the FAFSA, and it's based on your expected family contribution. Um, and there is a max amount typically per year that you can get as a graduate student. Um, you also must make sure that like you're competitive within your own institution and other external funding sources um, to be able to get certain funding as well too. So with the external funding, um, there can be a direct impact on um, basically your graduate and professional studies. So some things sometimes are going to be based on, you know, your specific field of study. So you wanna keep that in mind. As I mentioned earlier, it is no different from undergraduate in the costs of education and what your expected family contribution is and how your financial need is actually determined once you get to the funding portion of graduate school. So you can keep that in mind. Um, once you get into grad school, there are some very common uh, funding sources. As you were undergrad, you typically probably had a GSI. Um, now you have that opportunity to be a GSI. Um, those is, this is basically a graduate student instructor. Um, there's also a GSRA, which is a graduate student research assistant. Um, and then a GSSA, which is the graduate student staff assistant. Now, based on these, these are all specific things that you go through um, your program. Your program is typically where you apply for these funding sources. They all have opportunities that are available and you go through them to be able to get these. They go through a screening process. It's almost like, um, it's almost like applying for a job. And so you are in competition too with other students that are in your program that are applying for um, these, these sources of funding. And typically, depending on, there's different levels of commitments in terms of how much you're expected to contribute, um, but there, that will be specific to what your program is actually looking for, too. So who can actually get funding? Basically, all of you could possibly get funding. I will mention that typically it is a little more difficult for master students to receive funding. Um, I always recommend doing a lot of external searches for um, those students. Um, different type of funding sources become available depending on what type of student 
you are in the stage of your graduate program. So if you are an incoming student, um, you can be a returning graduate student. There's specific funding for that. You can be new to your graduate field and there could be funding for those that are transitioning to a new field. Um, and also paying attention to like, if you need to be a pre-candidate, if you're a PhD student or candidate um, <clears throat> level student. So there's different, uh, search specifications that you can go through to actually be able to find specific funding based on where you are and who you are and your special um, unique qualities as a student. So keep those things in mind if you have, you know, certain things, um, if there are certain areas that you live in that may um, offer funding for students that are within their area or thinking about going to, to the postgraduate to study within particular areas are also something that's pretty common. Um, so if you're thinking about, I don't know, going to study and develop things in Malaysia, for instance, then there may be some specific things there that, you know, um, you may be able to get funding for something from someone who is interested in those type of studies. There's different funding sources that may cover different things. So you have funding that may not necessarily cover all of your funding um, when it comes to your tuition, stipend, health insurance, but there are some that are inclusive of covering those um, expenses. Um, typically, they're going to be tuition, fees, stipend, um, grad care. Um, you'll hear health insurance referred to as grad care. Um, so those things are sometimes things that you may be able to get funding for. Um, there are also other little smaller funding sources that you can get. So for instance, within um, our department, we do offer conference travel grants for students that are traveling um, to present at conferences. Um, we also have an emergency fund um, too for students that are experiencing emergency funding. And all of this is on our website with these specific ones that I'm talking about now. Um, students are, as a master's student, you're allowed to get one emergency funding up to $2,500 um, during your time as a master's student. PhD students, because your time is a little bit longer here, so you can encounter more emergency situations, you can get up to two emergency fundings as a PhD student, and those are up to $2,500 each as well. So you want to keep those things in mind. Um, things happen, whether it's medical expenses um, that may come up. Up. Um, there's many unexpected instances that may happen um, that come up and there are specific eligibility requirements and things that we will cover. One big thing that has come up, especially with the transition to virtual learning, computers and laptops are not included in those emergency funding. Um, I do recommend if you are needing some additional um, technology resources, reaching out to your department, seeing if they have any available resources. Uh, sometimes they'll have lenders and things like that. Um, <clears throat> also, there are research expenses where as a master's and a pre-candidate, you can get a research grant up to $1,500. Um, as you become a candidate in your PhD program, it's $3,000. So that's something that a lot of our students do utilize to be able to kind of help with the expenses of their research. So um, there are many opportunities within Rackham and not even just Rackham, but also, you know, looking into like your department and external funding to be able to help fund some of those opportunities that come available um, as you go along. So you think about where do you find those sources. Um, online, of course, is the biggest place that you can go. Um, there's different private sectors and the government. Um, one of our biggest ones that we work with is the National Science Foundation, NSF. We do have quite a few students that come in and they receive um, the NSF. If you work Previously in the workforce or currently, you know, you hold a job, um, master students are more common where they are able to get assistance from their employers. Um, if there are any employee assistance things, take a look at that and really take advantage of those. Um, those are usually are really great programs. Um, you can also check in, you know, the university, um, your specific graduate school, um, 
your department, as I mentioned, departments usually are very helpful in finding um, scholarships or fellowships that are out there. And the reason why is because a lot of times it can be sp field specific. So they may know different funding sources based on what it is that you're studying. A lot of times too, students, you wanna make sure that like as you're applying and even as you're getting awarded, making sure that you understand what's actually available to you. So sometimes there may be funding that only funds one term or they may full, do a full year. Sometimes you'll have ones where you have to renew yearly and meet eligibility requirements. Um, you want to actually make sure, too, that you're taking a look on is tuition included or fees included? Um, are funds paid directly to you? Are they paid directly to the university? These are all things to kind of consider. And then making sure you meet what the eligibility requirements are. So a lot of times these fellowships will want you to be registered full time or meet if there's an external fellowship, they want you to meet whatever the requirements are of the university um, to be able to allow these to these fellowships to pay out to you. And usually what that means is being registered as a full time student. And if you're not, then that could revoke what it is that you were awarded. So making sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, sometimes there's stipulations in terms of outside um, work that you can do or the, uh, they limit how much you can uh, work. So for instance, with some of our fellowships in-house, we do have a 10 hour limit um, weekly that you can do as far as working because if it is a fully funded fellowship, we're felt as if we are funding you, um, we could want you to specifically focus on your studies. So there are other requirements that Programs want to know how you're doing, that they're awarding you. So you may have reporting activities to see that how you're moving along and then your advisors may have to sign on off on that um, to make sure that you are able to continue to get that funding. All right, and we kind of already talked about making sure you know you understand um, kind of some of those stipulations in terms of um, what is required as you go along uh, from that, the funding sources. One of the things that you do wanna keep in mind too, as you're being awarded funding, whether it is external funding or funding with from the university is how, if you're getting need-based aid from the Office of Financial Aid or, or um, government funding, is how that can actually affect you. So if you qualify for need is financial aid um, is a possibility if you are awarded additional funding that your loan amount can be reduced because you they're increasing how much it is you're expected to contribute based on that new funding information. So for instance, um, if you get a fellowship, um, your loan for $10,000, what you, your loan amount may be reduced by $10,000, but it's very specific to each individual student in your financial situation. So it's, all, it's always best to reach out to the Office of Financial Aid. They do all of the calculations in terms of what is expected for you to contribute. And then if you get new funding coming in, they're able to recalculate that and see how that may adjust it. Uh, sometimes it may not necessarily adjust it depending on what your need is. And so this can come in the form of if you have a loan amount or even a subsidy. So it's one of the one of the most common subsidies that a student may get is a child care subsidy. So that can also be reduced. So you want to make sure that if you're getting some funding that you contact the Office of Financial Aid so that there isn't any discrepancies there because um, students can be come what they call over awarded and then you may have to pay back money and sometimes if that money hits your account you think you're good and it's yours but then um, the office of financial aid comes back and says no and so you don't want to be in a position where you have to pay back funding where that you already spent so i can't stress enough how important that actually is i've kind of done like a mix of um Kind of the external funding and um, internal with uh, finance and fellowships office. Um, basically, what we do in the fellowships office is we house um, a number of fellowships that we actually handle, and then we partner with some external um, funding sources as well, too, 
where um, we may do something that's called a cost share program. So if it is um, an external funding, let's say I use um, NSF earlier, where students that are awarded at NSF get a cost of education of $12,000 a year. So what we do with this cost share program, if your tuition or cost of education is more than that, and that's just your tuition and your fees, is over $12,000, we do what's called a cost share where we will help um, and pay the difference of what your tuition is that isn't being covered by that $12,000. So um, that's a little example of what that is. Um, there's not a whole lot of summer research um, programs that are out there. There are some within Rackham, but not necessarily within fellowships. Sometimes we do help with kind of the putting funding on for the, for those programs, but there aren't really specifically summer research programs that we specifically deal with. Um, at this point. Just so you know, there are basically two types of ways in which you can get Rackham funding. So there are ones that you apply for on your own. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a travel um, grant. There's also the research and emergency. Um, you also have those in which you're nominated by. So your program has to actually nominate you for certain funding sources. So that one of our big ones are our, our Rackham Merit Fellowship and Rackham, um, Merit, uh, Rackham Master's Award, excuse me. Um, so those are things where your program goes in and they think that you qualify based on, you know, the information that they have about you. They go into the system and they they will tell you that they need certain information from you. You'll get that to them and they will put it into our system to be able to nominate you by the deadlines, which are all on our site. And if so, if you go and you see that it is a, a program nominated um, award um, that you think you may be eligible for, if it is before the deadline, um, I recommend going to your program and say, hey, I saw this award. Um, do you think that based on what the criteria is for the department and for Rackham that I will qualify? And what do I need to be able to apply? And you want to make sure that you're in contact with your program. Usually it's your graduate coordinator who has this information. Um, because they have their own internal deadlines that are typically before the Rackham deadline so that they can get all the information into the system um, by our deadline date. If you go to our website, um, you'll be able to see all of the fellowships, um, grants and scholarships that we are able to offer. Um, this is a list of that here. There are, there are probably about a good two dozen of them um, in different uh, funding sources, some that are going to be fully funded, some that are specific to needs, like I said, emergency research travel. Um, they're all listed here and they're open to all math. Well, some are open to masters, um, but mostly are all of them are open to our PhD students, but you all would Everything is listed on there in terms of what the eligibility is um, so that you can make sure that you're applying for what it is that you're eligible for. Um, here specifically, you can kind of see those that are open to our master's level students. So that list is much shorter than that of our PhD um, students. So if you matriculate into a PhD program, you'll have more funding opportunities. So master's students are completely left out. Um, I know I've just given quite a bit of information. So I don't know, did anyone have any questions? A couple of questions in the chat, Shanice. Uh, and folks keep putting the, uh, the questions in. Um, so, First question is, was, I would love to learn more about NSF funding and how Rackham, <laughs> sorry, Zoom did one of those scroll to the bottom and someone put a, a comment in the box. Uh, let me go back up to it. Uh, I would love to know more about NSF funding and how Rackham has worked with those students that have NSF funding. Where can I learn more? So um, through our website, I'll put that in chat. There's tons of funding information on here. Um, let me go to the... With SF in specific, specifically, it is a cost share. 
So that's where you will, you scroll through the list that I'm going to put here in a chat. Um, you'll want to go to cost share. This is the site that I reference uh, mostly. And one of the things that I will do is I will, this presentation, I know it kind of went through and there's some helpful information. So um, most of it is here. Um, I know this is recorded. So um, Paul, this is going to be posted so that like students can specifically go back and take a look sure. and see like if you want to pause it on, to see what some of those awards are. Um, that are listed you'll be able to see that but you'll also be able to see it right here on this website too and there's some links in the grad 101 portal and the financial aid the finance the financing grad school section um, there's some links that will take you to some of the resources you talked about as well so there's lots of different ways for people to um, look at funding options here uh, other question next question is are all GSI, GSRA, and GSSA positions posted slash available through specific programs, or is there a one-stop shop for applications and available positions? I believe if you go to um, the U of them employee yeah. site, you're able to see all of those positions. Um, but I also would still go and talk to like see what your program and, and the protocol that they use too um, because they are going to know what's going to become available before it's even posted so that you kind of have some of the inside track guys I really recommend getting to know your graduate coordinator your graduate coordinator is like they have information just about anything when it comes to your funding. So if you have questions about funding, how can you fund the upcoming year? Um, if you are have funding in place and you want to know when you probably should use certain funding for what year, get to know your graduate coordinators. And I would add to that um, a couple of things. Number one, I put the careers.umich website in the chat for those who are not familiar with it. So that's where a lot of these postings um, go. Um, I'm going to reemphasize, get to know your grad coordinators or anyone who has in your programs who has access to jobs or has sort of plugged in. And then I think third, just remember to look at them. Everyone here is automatically signed up for the weekly Rackham newsletter. So check your email inbox for that, like open it up. There is a job section and as sometimes um, positions become open, whether they're GSSI, GSRA, or sometimes we just have temp positions we need to fill that it's another place, you will find those jobs on the uh, UMICH career site, but sometimes just a quicker, more concise way for you to sort of get the answer to that. So some good resources on, on, on that. Uh, next question, let's see. Question about going to the last slide on master's opportunities, Shanice, so maybe we can, um, Opportunities for master students funding. Uh, we can maybe okay. do that here. So do you want to do that here yeah. or? Yeah, let's um, let's answer one more another question, and we'll we'll show the slide um, after that. Uh, so I'm an incoming PhD. This question is: I'm an incoming PhD student this fall with a fellowship for funding. I was informed that for the winter semester I will be a GSRA. What is the difference between the fellowship and being a GSRA? Um, you want to take a sure. Crack at Andrew, that? It really depends on what um, what the fellowship actually is. So I'm not sure what your fellowship is, but it it, it depends and it can vary. Um, I don't know if you want to put in the chat what that fellowship is, and I can speak specifically to it, or if you want to email too, um, we can talk about it that way. Um, I'm going to put the email address in here. And I would add, um, this is sort of in addition to that, um, there are potential tax implications for that. I am not a tax expert, but we do have a filing taxes for graduate students workshop uh, that uh, covers some of this information from a tax perspective, not from a, you know, from a funding, but from sort of how and if you need to report it. So I'm going to put that link uh, in the in the chat here in a moment and you, you all can sign up for that. Um, and, or view past, if you go into the portal, we actually have one of our past tax workshops uh, already recorded. It's obviously not up, it's, it's current, but it was taken, I believe, right before last tax season. So you can sort of peruse that and then come to our workshop on September 1st. 
Yeah, and just because typically those are good to attend because we are highly advised not to give any yeah. tax advice um, on that. And I'm no tax expert anyhow, yeah. but yeah. We are, we're highly advised. Um, around tax time, we'll get a bunch of questions. Um, usually stipends are not um, tax. So um, you really want to make sure you attend that so that you know how to go about handling your taxes. Question was, uh, clarify, a graduate program coordinator is different from an academic advisor in this context. Typically, um, yes. Yes, they are. Um, sometimes, though, when you get into grad school, sometimes they become one and the same. So it, it's going to probably depend on your department, how big your department is, and kind of how they have things um, situated within the department. But typically, sometimes they are one and the same. It, it varies. Question about funding opportunities for international students and what are they and do some of them differ than domestic students? Um, there are some for international students. Um, most of them are going to be, um, I'm thinking um, more so PhD students, um, that our candidate, like our pre-doctoral program mm -hmm. is more so for international. Um, I typically recommend international students reach out to the international center too, to see what opportunities they have available. Um, they, they have more information there on funding for international students. Yep. Um, question, thank you, uh, let's see. There's a question about work study in here, Shanice. I'm curious about work study. I know some positions on careers at UMich are work study. Um, are there other routes for getting work study positions? And, and, and I, I add to that is, is work study something typically a lot of graduate students are eligible for? It depends. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, I can't, I don't know a number. I don't know. I can't say typically. Sure. Yes, it is definitely possible for grad students to have work study. Um, and it's because it's such a difference. So probably more so master's students, typically PhD students, um, there's usually a, a fund are pretty well funded at the University of Michigan. So mm -hmm. um, usually PhD students are trying to seek out work um, study opportunities is usually more so master students that are seeking out those opportunities. And so you have the work study, um, but you also have, as Paul mentioned, temp opportunities, and those would be the ones, and part-time opportunities too, um, that I would probably more so explore as a graduate student. I had a question in the box about recordings. Um, for those that came a little bit late, these sessions will be recorded and shown at a later date. So if you missed part of this or wanna come back and review it, um, they will. It takes about a couple of weeks for it to get sort of posted online, but in the grad school 101 portal, look for updates. We're actually going to create like a video vault of all past workshops from this year and actually in import some of the ones we did from last year as well. So you'll have lots of video resources to catch up on um, as, as we go through that. I think Brittany Earls had a question she wanted to ask. You can unmute yourself if you want to go ahead and ask your question. Yes, hi, good morning. Um, so my name is Brittany and I am um, an incoming dual degree student with the Masters of Social Work and Masters of Public Policy program. I received an email about a fellowship about, and it's gonna be a generic question, I promise, about getting a quarter of funding per th for three semesters. I told um, the public policy coordinator that I only need two semesters of funding. And I was wondering if my third semester of funding could be applied to my first or second semester of funding. And they told me no. And I was just curious if you had an answer to that no. Um, I don't, I know that. So with our funding in particular, um, usually if there's a particular funding structure we may have to stick to what that structure is. Um, and so sometimes we can't necessarily deviate from it. And it probably, it sounds like that's probably what they're saying to you. Um, and it, it happens sometimes where students may, not a whole lot, but it does happen where, you know, students want to move things around and they're not able to keep 
one source of funding because they have other funding that covers something, even in like your situation where it sounds like you don't have coverage for one. So you, it, I get like in your mind, it because even, you know, for me, I'm like, okay, well, I don't have it for this. So just move it over. <laughs> but right. Yeah. So, but <laughs> sometimes, sometimes programs, they have, it has to be specific for um, whatever reason, whether it's, you know, the funding mm-hmm. isn't yet available or it can only be available for a, a specific time frame. Right. Yeah. Cause that third semester of funding, I'm like, Hey, I don't need it because I'm, I'm completing my degree in two semesters, not three. So I was like, can mm-hmm. I take that third semester of funding and allocate it to the, and they were like, no, and to me, that felt like a slap in the face. Like, here, we're going to give you this money, but then we're just going to take it away from you because you're completing your degree early. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and typically in in your situation, um, the way that it is, is that so the funding may not be paid to your department until your third term, but you're wanting to move it up. But the money isn't there yet for them to actually be able to use. And that's that's more than likely what it is. I can't speak speak specifically to it but if it's it's almost like it's not there yet so I can't you can't move it up because we don't have it got it thank you so much yeah no problem there was one question about um without reading it directly basically how can someone tell the difference or which which is their specific funding source so fellowship gsra grsa you know etc um they're saying they see nothing in their Wolverine access as of yet. Is there a way of, I guess this is after the fact, um, identifying where the funding comes from? Um, I feel like you should know where, like what funding source you're going to be getting. Mm-hmm. Now, programs, and I know even um, with myself, they're still like, if you, let's say if you have a Rackham Fellowship, maybe let's say an RMF, um, the funding is still getting put onto your account. So you may start to see that more within the next week or two. Um, If you're unsure about how you're going to get funded, um, your graduate coordinator would be the person. But at this point, um, it should have been communicated if you're going, what source of income it is, but you may not see it on your account just yet. Um, And you may, it just may be another week week and a half, maybe. I know classes are starting soon and you guys are starting to get those tuition bills that are due by the 31st. Most of the time that is going to be on your account by then and you'll be able to see it. So um, I hate to say patience with that, but um, especially because it gets so close, but we literally work with putting on a lot of information for a lot of students. And so um, I think that's kind of where that may be coming from um, with that lack of knowledge. But if you don't know where it's coming from, definitely get with your graduate coordinator. Thank you. Reading through the chat. There was that one question earlier about showing, re-showing the slide about master's funding opportunities. Oh, Can we, yes. we do that? And if folks, if you have questions, please keep putting them in the box while Shanice fires that up. One other thing I, I do want to make sure that I mentioned too is that, um, that like if you're in the medical school, the business school, um, the school of public health, um, school of social work, those are professional de- degree schools and they're not a part of the Rackham family. And so what that means for you if you are in those schools is that the Rackham funding would not be available to you. All right, question. Um, oh, Shanice, can you repeat which schools are not under Rackham? Mm-hmm. Yep, um, School of Social Work, a medical school, business school, 
and a School of Public Health. I'm typing these in the box as well. Uh, one question was about where can, where on the Rackham website can we find recordings of workshops and recordings will be in the Canvas portal under Grad School 101. If you would like to peruse last year's workshops, and again, note that these are last year's, uh, which isn't to say they're not relevant, but they were done a year ago. Um, I'm putting a link uh, there in the my video folder, which is uh, kind of a repository where we kept last year's workshops. And those a lot of those will be imported to Grad School 101 um, as well. All right, so one of the questions is asking, um, one of the PhD funding opportunities was for incoming students only. Could you elaborate on that scholarship in particular? So at this point, um, typically anything that is for incoming PhD students, that would have been determined by the spring term of this year. So programs is used as a recruitment, programs are able to use it as a recruitment tool. So they may have given students, um, nominated students for uh, that particular fellowship for them to actually come in and kind of draw a student into what it is. And you may be thinking about, it might be the RMF, the Rack of Merit Fellowship that you're speaking of, as something that the programs, they do nominate incoming students for. Um, and so if you have received that, you have already known at this point, it's nothing that can be um, awarded at this point for any incoming students. If you're a dual degree student, can you apply for Rackham through your school? Is that a part of the Rackham family? Yes, if you are a dual degree student in one program is um, a part of Rackham under the Rackham umbrella, you can apply. Now, especially for those things that are ongoing, like the travel grant, research grant, emergency fund, um, it gets a little more tricky when you get into kind of like those fellowships, because sometimes you may have it where you're, um, let's say you're um, in this, um, you're in Ross, as the example is here in the chat. Um, if you're only enrolled in Ross courses, then tuition and fees are different. So we would not necessarily be able to apply fellowship that applies tuition and fees for that term. So you want to make sure that you're able to be enrolled in the Rackham um, classes during that term in which you receive the award. Shanice, the question says, if I'm getting part tuition fellowship for fall, winter, fall and winter term, can I still apply to get a fellowship for insurance because of certain life events? And who do I contact regarding that? If insurance is not included, you would contact um, Shared Services. Shared Services, and they will be able to um, walk you through, I believe it's, they will walk you through the COBRA process. All right, any other questions? All right, seeing none, we are gonna probably close the session for today. We are, uh, we'll stick around if you have questions that you wanna do off camera. Maureen is going to put a link in the chat for an evaluation, please give us your feedback on this session as we want to know what other topics we can cover and what we can include to make this even more useful to you uh, down the road. And uh, if you uh, are still with us and uh, perhaps your you have uh, your name in the chat box is like just your, your preferred name, if you could stick around and just give us what name you registered with so we can make sure you're counted in the attendance. Other than that, thank you so much. Shanice, thank you for all the great information. And uh, we will see you soon on Grad School 101. Thanks, everybody.